Hello, Mario! Civil Engineering Detailing and Modelling Subdivision Project Briefing Part 3 Roading Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, that was quite a mouthful, wasn't it? Right, well, let's uh, not muck around. Let's get straight in. We're here, here to... Uh, here for business. So let's get in and go to civil engineering detailing and modeling and straight to the assessment page drop down part three roading with 25 percent here's this video that you're watching now so if you're watching this video you would have clicked here or perhaps my youtube channel so part three roading and into here Project Part 3 Roading brings up this um, little thing here, the assignment. So, it's due on Monday the 18th of September 2017 at 11.59.59 p.m. Email in your completed work or arrange a suitable alternative means of submission with your tutor. Uh, the learning outcomes are essentially the learning outcomes for the course. Um, produce drawings, uh, understand the role of computer-based information systems, particularly modeling, visualization and design, and the management of projects. Uh, use a software package to explore aspects of a project. Uh, the percentage or of the total mark is 25%. Um, for this, so um, there will be more time, obviously, than the last two projects. And the aim is to understand the param parameters associated with the design of roading for a subdivision. So in terms of roading for a subdivision, this is at the residential level in front of houses. Um, this is probably the lowest you know, level of roading in terms of cars are travelling at low speed in a fairly controlled environment as regards to the open road, 100 kilometres an hour type of situation. So um, it's, this is at roading design at the very basic level. Um, the objective is to design and document the roading for a 20 to 30 lot subdivision with a minimum of one intersection, one horizontal curve, one vertical curve, M1 cul-de-sac head. So a number of uh, the roading elements associated with sub or one of each really. So your task, uh, alignment, uh, design and document the alignment, include details of the center line really, uh, and it should be possible to set out the position and height of, if necessary, and offset if necessary by a competent surveyor. So. The idea is that you provide a set of plans that would be capable of, you know, to build the road from, um, and usually that's set out by a surveyor. Uh, and the details should be all the details showing on the plan only. Well, these uh, modern times, there's a tendency that everything is in a digital format, but um, there are a number of debates as to what forms part of the contract. Um, and quite often, everything is done off, off, off plans in an official sense, although digital data is provided in some instances, um, its um, veracity um, is not necessarily um, confirmed by the person giving it out. So we need to be quite clear as to what the documents for the contract are. So a good set of plans is always the something that you can fall back on, but it increasingly um, we are heading towards a digital uh, environment, so there will be different ways of controlling that in time. Uh, in particular, in a sort of, this is in a sort of a, a design, you set the design and then the work is contracted out. However, where they're all combined into the design and build sort of um, situation, uh, things can vary. So in this case, um, we're requiring everything to be recorded on the plans, and that will form the 
part of the contract. Uh, details of the alignment geometry and key scene line changes with coordinates and heights will need to be shown and also some of the um, some of the calculations that go with that. Now, uh, if you're using uh, various software, so that there will be reports that can be taken from the software, and these should be um, should be used as evidence of the various calculations and things. So, but there may be some paper calculations that are done. And um, so that's, um, you know, always going to be difficult um, to do. So just uh, bear that in mind, that um, where reports are generated by the software, that you should uh, keep copies of them. Long sections, design and document the vertical, and ali uh, uh, road ali vertical road alignment on long sections. Uh, the long sections should include details of vertical alignment, and it's correlation with key elements of the horizontal alignment. So we've got to align the two up so that um, you know that, that that they're logical and make sense. So we don't want to have a um, you know a, a, a sag vertical curve going round a you know round a corner that could cause um, some sort of problems in terms of visibility and night you know and um, drainage all sorts of implications. So um, we need to um, you know, record on how it all works. Cross sections, design and the details of the cross sections at regular changes and key positions. So this is quite key so that people get an idea of what's happening at various stages along the road. Um, and typical road cross sections should also be included within the plan set, which um, you possibly would have done earlier. Earthworks, so there will be some earthworks associated with your Roading. So previously, uh, you've done what we call preliminary earthworks, which was the, the last assignment effect. So once you've designed the road, um, a little bit of earth needs to be moved, and there may be need to be some uh, other further earthworks just to blend everything in, so that we've got a sensible overall result. And uh, so that needs to be included. Details in there again in reports. Um, the volumes and areas and things like that that are generated by the software uh, need to be kept uh, for reporting purposes. Road details, so in some of the areas uh, such as the cul-de-sac head and the intersection, uh, details may be necessary um, of the detailed plan showing the set out um, associated with road intersection and cul-de-sac heads. So you know, these are areas where um, you might need to just uh, have a drawing at a larger scale so that we can sort of work it out and show uh, some um, aspects of um, drainage like uh, and that, that sort of thing. Uh, the design surface. So at the end of this, at the end of the roading, once all the roading is done and the earthworks associated with it and any earthworks outside of that, we should have a final what the final surface of the subdivision will look like uh, as it as it goes to market, and that surface is the surface um, that the drainage will be designed on. So it's important that you have a good surface going for, forward for stray uh, for stage four, and that's for the drainage situation, so that the the drainage will then be designed on top of that surface. And so that's quite important that it's um, quite a clear surface with not too much what we call noise on it um, so that set cross -set, um, long sections can be generated uh, from that for the drainage. Okay, and the plans and report. Um, this, just remember that this sec this is a... This is part three of the overall project. So the timing and the what's on the plans are part of the milestone. So there might be some things that perhaps are better done a little bit later on or things. But the bulk of the stuff that's uh, in this part three can be done. The plan should be starting to come together and um, it should be uh, all, all there just to be... Uh, certainly the design should be... Uh, complete and 
the final CAD, CAD versions of the plans may need some adjustment going forward in later in later stages. Now the marking schedule, um, this is key as to what happens. So this is where to put your efforts and gives you the weightings of the various things. So the alignment is well documented on plans and in the report. So this is important that you, as I say, keep those calculation reports that are generated from the software, keep them uh, as you go along so that you can refer back to them in the, at the end. Design calculations are clear and well documented with a consistent format. Uh, the evidence that the design meets Hamilton City Council requirements is provided, so you just need to show your, you know, that you've considered HCC requirements and how you've achieved them. Set out, we've um, talked about coordinate and height datums, very important, and that's um, quite easy, an easy mark just for showing your coordinate and height datums. However, your coordinates and heights need to be um, related to those datums. Um, you can't just write them on there to get the marks you need the coordinates actually have to be in terms of those datums. Um, while the coordinates may not be may be fictitious, um, they should be sort of in the same in the in the general ballpark, and this is quite easily checked. Uh, plans are clear with no overriding, so just yeah, just be aware no overriding, and this is can be a bit tricky when you're generating the plans out of software. Scales are correct and shown. Correct and shown. You can show scales, but they need to be correct. Uh, long sections have clear height above datum line shown. Horizontal and vertical geometry is shown clearly on the long section. So this is the relationship between the horizontal geometry, curves and uh, straights and what have you, and the vertical geometry, which are your vertical curves and what have you. Um, vertical alignment calculations are discussed or included in the design report. So some discussion of what you're doing, your grades and how it all fits together and um, relationships with drainage later on, uh, why certain things were done and how they might um, reduce cost and stuff further down the track. Uh, earthworks are clearly shown with volumes and areas. Uh, cross sections are clear and appropriate. Um, road details are clear and sufficient for set out purposes so you can actually set the road out from what you've shown and uh, this is key if you can't uh, set it out how are you going to build it uh, the design surface is suitable for drainage calculations so that design surface um, this this question may be answered perhaps further down the track, but certainly need to bear that in mind as you're going forward. And the key data and information is clear and easily interpreted. And the plans have been checked and there is no obvious errors on the plans. So that's there. And these this is, as I say, these are milestone events. So you can go through and adjust the plans uh, further down the track as we get closer and closer to the end uh, when we have to produce a um, thing. So that's the um, assessment document there or the assignment. Let's just go back um, and let's perhaps um, see if we can just have a look at the uh, videos that I've provided under subdivision design just to sort of illustrate some of the points. There are other examples available. Um, so I'm just going to go to um, progress to date, which is here. You'll notice that my videos uh, stop at the end of this section. I'm hoping to uh, have some more on the drainage side of things um, coming soon, one would hope. So um, this is this is the um, so this is the layout should now be finished with the cadastral survey control, your land use, your preliminary earthworks, and now here's your roading. So this is the roading details. Uh, here's um, just a diagram showing here um, the the sort of way things are here. 
um, with the uh, here's some um, coordinates and heights that would enable the set out of the center line. Uh, here's the uh, long section uh, here. Um, so this would um, this here would give the um, the roading uh, there. This is the the long section here and the cross sections here. Um, there's probably some more detail needed in here with regards to the um, perhaps this needs to be um, a little bit oh with regards to the roading details oh yes um, so it's giving giving you here um, the radius uh, IP2 uh, the radius of the curve and the arc length and the details there. So this is giving you the roading details. Um, so there's a, um, these are the uh, tangent to the curve there uh, and here and then uh, this this is the curve details in here uh, and that's the finish of the tangent. So these are the points here so you can see you've got the roading details here road, road 2 um, oh, that's road one. Road two is a straight, so it's just going uh, straight through there. IP one, uh, IP two, and then this is road three. And again, it's got a a little curve, a curve on it there. So that's uh, some stuff there. Um, here's your uh, long sections, uh, your long section here, and some cross sections. Now this is just out of my videos, which, as I point out, are incomplete at this point in time. Um, so I would perhaps have a look. This is an, a very old example here, but it will give you an idea of all of the plans. So I'll just uh, have a quick look at this one here. Um, this is, in fact, a subdivision um, plan drawn by hand by my good self actually um, a long time ago so here's your um, but and I show this as an example of the the sort of plan set and what you might include so here's your general layout um, this is your earthworks plan showing and uh, th this is in uh, the Wellington region where large uh, cut and fill earthworks are required sometimes to achieve subdivision you can see here so this is my uh, earthworks and design contours uh, here's the earthworks cut and fill diagram so the contours the final contours shown on here would be the contour you know that you would be using for the drainage so um, you would see that take this contour here would you would the drainage would be based and it all it all joins up contoured cover out through here across through here pick up again back into natural and then and so on all the way through um, so that and this is the earthworks the areas that earthworks would re be required like so um, these are some um, roading details here so you've got uh, typical cross sections of different um, different cross sections for different bits of road in here and this in here is the um, this gives you the roading roading details of all of the curves there's quite a number of curves in here um, one two three each curve has a little um, some information about it that's there so um, that could be shown on plans and things like that uh, here's the long sections with the horizontal and vertical geometry. And then these are the very roading details around the intersections here and the uh, cul-de-sac heads. Just um, the actual details of those um, there that it would be necessary in order to set them out. Not that easy to see, but um, there. And then, then you have here, you'll see that the, the surface there is the one uh, from the earthworks after the earthworks have been have been complete and then this is the drainage uh, and here here's your drainage so the location of all your your drainage sewer and stormwater coordinates for each um, 
you know, coordinates for stormwater and, and wastewater. Uh, this here is the stormwater scheme plan, uh, which would show the various catchments and some details of those catchments. Uh, and then these are the long sections for each of the stormwater and sewer um, pipelines uh, going through like that. And then finally here is a, water, is, is a water plan showing where the water goes. So this is what your set of plans, or this is some details around water and that. It's a standard set of details, so um, I wouldn't expect that that would possibly be a part of your assignment. But um, yeah, it's there. So that sort of genera is the um, set of plans there um, that would be something like what your um, final set of plans would look like. So I'm going to um, leave that there. Um, I think that gives you a bit of an idea of um, where we're heading with the earthwork. So the process is um, is quite um, you know it's quite a familiar sort of logical um, way to go through uh, surface, um, some layout, then your roading, your drainage, and then everything comes together, um, all the reporting and what have you, and the uh, final final little bit here. So this particular assignment is um, worth 25%, so a little bit more time associated with that one. So I think we'll uh, leave that there. Cheers. See you.